There's somewhat weird people. So I'll just move around to the trees and see if there's any more. See ya? Simon is chasing elk, but not just any elk. He's looking for the ones that live and graze in and around the Banff town site, using it as a refuge from predators. There are uh, a few issues around having elk in the town site. One of the main ones is that um, they, they do so well and thrive so well in the town site that they stop migrating and they stop uh, becoming part of the natural system around them and uh, they can live almost 12 months a year. Uh, in, in subdivisions and on people's front lawns. When they're in built up and developed areas and there's no predators around, uh, their, their populations tend to grow very fast. In the late 1990s, um, where we would see, uh, you know, between five and 600 elk in that same zone. So we're, we're down to uh, anywhere from a half to a third of what we were at our, our peak when our, our conflicts were the highest. I think the biggest misconception that people have about elk is that they are completely tame animals and that it's almost a, a zoo setting when they see them in Banff. Elk can be extremely dangerous, uh, even fatal, uh, towards visitors and uh, it's, it's quite shocking when you see how close people approach elk um, throughout the year. Hazing is basically scaring the elk to move them away from a certain area. So we, we use ourselves, we just can walk up and approach the elk and, and yell at them and, and um, make noise to try and scare them off. Um, however, an elk's a big intimidating animal, sometimes, especially a big bull elk. So uh, we do have some extra tools. We can use a hockey stick. So um, it's just a stick with flagging tape on it. Basically, the, the flapping of the tape um, makes enough noise that it, it uh, unnerves them. And, uh, and it's also a big stick, which makes me feel better if there's a big elk in front of me. I've got something in my hands. We do uh, a variety of, of hazing actions and aversive conditioning on elk uh, in and around the, the Bount town site to try and encourage them to keep a, a distance. But it does tend to be a, uh, a short-term benefit unless the action is consistent and applied again and again. Uh, in other words, the elk will only run uh, so far and then they'll return again to uh, areas of better forage or security to get away from carnivores. We would love to get ourselves out of the business of uh, managing elk on a day-to-day -day basis. We'd love to get the population to a point uh, uh, where it's, it's manageable and uh, sustainable uh, and uh, carnivores are keeping the population in check and the elk are not around the town site and other high use areas. Uh, we've come a long ways already in the last 10 to 15 years. We've got a long ways to go, but uh, I'm optimistic. My predecessor in this job had a great line, which was, uh, you can chase an elk anywhere that it wants to go. And uh, that's really the truth. Sometimes when we're uh, doing these hazing actions, it's almost like running in a great big circle. After an hour or two, you can end up almost where you, you started. 